Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sonia Abel. Today I want to talk about business strategies. So, my last video on entrepreneurship uh, tips, I actually talked about business model converse, then I went ahead to actually talk about value proposition. Today I want to talk about the most vital and crucial part of the piece, which is actually the first one is your product. What do you produce? Now, when you talk about products, you have tangible and intangible products. Tangible in a situation where that you actually have goods that you produce and probably sell. So you sell, you're into buying and selling and retailing and all that has to do with um, exchanging goods and serve, um, for money. Right, but intangible is when you are actually offering a service like what I'm doing right now can be classified as intangible in as much as you guys watching my video right now are actually my customers. So that's the first P, the product. What do you produce? Is it something that your customers find valuable? Does it make an impact in their life? Does it solve their problem? Does it um, do a particular job for them? Does, does it relieve their pain and does it create gain? But then remember where we are coming from when we talk about value proposition. The area of your customer um, profiling talks about um, the job, the pain, and the gain that your product or your value is actually going to be rendering for them. Now, the second P we need to talk about is pricing. What is your price like? Do you have um, a particular price for all your product? Like, let's say you only have um, one segment of your product. So, is your price for everybody, is it something um, and for mainly for the upper class, is it something um, a middle class person or a lower class person can be able to afford or do you have it in different segmentations where um, you have for the poor, you have, I don't like that word poor, um, i rather say the lower class, financial class, is it uh, something for the middle class or is it something for the upper class? Right? So, or do you have it in different that it can actually go for different sizes? Just an instance of that is our uh, milk, right? We have uh, milk in family size, big size, and we also have it in uh, a smaller size where anybody can literally purchase it. Like you have sachet milk where you they sell it for um, a cheaper price, right? Now, the, f the third P we need to talk about is place where is your business located is your business located um, in uh, a richmond area or is your business um, strictly an online business or do you have an on-site shop where you can buy people can buy now i would like to talk about this in detail because talking about having a place that's your location where is your business located you might actually be doing a business that is made for, let's say, for instance, you're selling luxury. Now, you cannot be selling luxury and you are not in where you can find these luxury people, right? If you're selling luxury, you have to be where is strategic for people that are actually looking for luxury to see you. So you cannot go and sell to people that is actually managing to feed and to pay bills. So you have to go for where the luxuries are. And you cannot be selling something for the lower class and you decide to go and stay where people that buy, um, that goes for quality and um, maybe for luxuries are. Nobody will patronize you, right? So where is your business located? The business, the products and the service you're in, you intend rendering. Are you in the right place for the business to actually grow? Now, the fourth one and the last one on today's topic is actually uh, promotion. What and how do you intend to reach your customers? Um, do you have uh, a strategy, a marketing strategy that you intend to deploy to actually reach people? How do you want to reach them? Are you going to be doing a word of mouth? Do you want to do uh, marketing, uh, digital marketing? Do you want to know? How do you actually intend? to reach these customers. So now, this is the four P's you need to consider when thinking about marketing your product and when thinking about how to actually reach your customers. 
and deliver your product and services to your customer. So now let's go into marketing strategy. What is marketing? Marketing is simply um, a process of exploring, creating and delivering values to your customers through your product and your services. So you need to find a way to create um, a connection, a process of producing and delivering these services to your customers, right? I will have different types of marketing strategy that you need to actually go into at different stage. This is not something you cannot do all of them at a time. You take it step by step, right? So the first one is market penetration. Now you have a product that you want to produce, you have at the back of your mind the people you want to sell to, which is your target market. Now it's time to actually uh, figure out how to penetrate this market. So you already have your product and you need to find a way to actually um, gain market recognition for this your product in your market area. So you do that by increasing on your activities of the things you do. You could actually do more of marketing. You could actually do one, um, something like buy one and get one free. But anything that you actually have to do to actually boost your business and gain market recognition in your market area. That is uh, number one thing, which is market penetration. So at this time, you've come up with a business idea, you've developed on it, and now it's time to launch into the market. So you've launched into the market, the next thing is to do market penetration. Now, after market penetration, the next you have is um, market development. So you've gained um, access to this particular market and you've conquered the market. Now your product or your service is well known and you're getting the recommendation, you're making money, um, you, you are making your return on investment on this particular product and you're like, okay, so now we've conquered this particular market. What is the next thing? So at this point, you might want to start looking for other markets where your product is not visible enough even though it might be there but it's not visible so you try to penetrate other markets you try to make your impact and get seen in other markets so you also start using the same strategy you actually use in your market penetration to start getting penetrations to in this other market thereby increasing and growing your customer base now when once you've gotten that recognition in different markets, marketplace, right? So when we talk about marketplace, you know that we're not necessarily talking about uh, a particular uh, a shop market where you talk about or maybe on your social media handles or maybe um, a particular shop or maybe a fast food if you're into bakeries and all that stuff, right? Now, once you've, get, you've gotten uh, market development, the next thing, you need to talk about is a uh, product development so you have this product already that is already penetrating the market is already doing well in one or two other markets right and you're not like okay maybe we should just expand a little bit and you now decide to like produce uh, a product that you know that your current customer base are going to love like you already have a market for it because of the recognition this particular um, product have in the market, and now like, okay, let's try in another thing. You decide to bring in um, another product. Let me take for instance, uh, okay, so, okay, one that I know very well that I could want to, I want to use is um, Sunlight, right? Yeah, but a lot of other ones do that too. So Sunlight started as a detergent. We all know it was a detergent. Then when they conquered their market, they decided to actually go into bath soap, right? So they started producing soap. Now we'll talk about the toy. The toy did the same thing. They had, um, we knew them um, as one thing, they next, they're already producing soap and, and other things. So yeah, when you've conquered your market, you've gone into different markets, then it's time for you to want to add in another product that you know that you already have a customer base for that already. So these are, the penetrations you need then. The last one is actually, um, you can call it online market or e-commerce. Now, I'm gonna be talking about digital marketing in my next video, but I wanna give in, um, a little light into it. So 
it's okay if you have a physical shop that is already doing well for you you feel you have the customer base you're getting your return on investment and your customer base is growing and you're getting a nice feedback but then because of the world that is changing currently you know that the marketplace is online so it would be nice if you're not there already to get on track and get online so have your online presence um should i put it the way i think right now is um even if i hear about you and i feel you're doing well offline and you have a great shop offline but when i check out for you online and i did not see your products or maybe go to your profile or maybe any of the social media handles and i'm not seeing i don't count the people serious because we are the era where businesses are going online so you need to get yourself online if you want to stay in business right so that is that about that but i'll talk about that in details in my next uh, video so, so let's forge ahead now before we continue i want to talk about um the customer journey map right so we we've talked about how to your strategies you're going to be using to penetrate the market and all that work we need to break it down on how you're actually supposed to be getting these customers and how you're going to be making them stay right so the number one thing on the customer journey map is awareness right yeah so somebody heard about your products for the first time or came across your social media handle or probably stumbled upon your flyer and they're like okay so i'm just hearing this for the first time okay i want to know more about them so that is your first contact with your product right so at this point when they start making their researches about you it will be in your in your own interest and in the interest of your company to have enough details that can make these people make the right decisions in your favor on your social media handle on the flyer or whatever thing it is that they came in, in contact with your, your website your page whatever thing it is so their first contact with you is called awareness so from there it will move them to what they what uh, we call uh, consideration so they start to consider so at this point reviews are very important um, testimonials from people that have used your products or your services are very important at this stage so make sure you have those things available make sure you have um, any uh, information or details that you think is going to add people wanting to buy from you that will add them to make a decision that will favor you have them on your social media have them on your page have them in anywhere maybe your catalog whatever thing it is that they are actually going to be coming in contact but this is basically a most especially if you're running an online business where people have to literally decide to um, to do business with you or to do with somebody else right so it's quite very important that you have your details every good information your testimonials um reviews from people on your social media handles or everywhere that your con your customers need to see right so now after the consideration they've gone through everything every information you have there and they've considered your price your quality of service your your quality of delivery how fast can you people deliver if you've been contacted now that is what is going to move them to the stage of decision now in this decision stage is where they make up their mind if they are going to be buying your products or needing your service based on the information they have about your company based on the reviews based on the testimonial that they've seen based on how serious um, they see your business to be and how authentic they actually need it for their day-to-day -day life so this is what to edge them into making a decision and fortunately for you if they make a decision in your favor and decide to purchase your goods after using your goods and your goods are very okay and your services was wonderful then that is what moved them to the stage of advocacy they will advocate for you they will start doing word of mouth marketing for you they will start referring you to others they will also give their reviews and testimonials about your product and service and, we, and from there you are already growing your business so these are uh, the customer journey map that you want that is very crucial and essential 
in your business. Now let's talk about key factors that are actually important for your business. Number one is uh, specialization. It is very important that you specialize in a particular niche. Do not be everywhere if you want to do business. Make up your mind, this is a business I've chosen for myself and this is a niche I want to go into and stick to it. Um, I, I've gone to, this is very common with uh, pharmaceutical shop or chemist, what should I call it? So you get that and you find out that they are selling drugs, uh, they are selling provision. I don't even know if I've seen food stuff added to it too. But I mean, you are confused. Are you specializing on one thing or you are just a jack of all three, master of none, right? So specialize on one thing. Have a particular niche where people know that this is what I do. This is where I specialize, right? When you find that niche, stick to it. Now the next is, is actually a differentiation. And they say that differentiation is, is key to every successful uh, marketing strategy. So what makes you different from your other competitors? Why would, if I'm coming to buy from you now, why would I patronize you instead of the competitor? So there is uh, something, I'm actually coming to that, where they say they ask you a question, what is your unique selling point? And you say your quality of service and, um, and what again? So somebody said they asked the question. So I, when you can boast on that is because you feel that the other of your um, person does not have quality service. That they, but if they also render a quality service, quality service is not supposed to be what differentiates you. That's not supposed to be your, uh, your unique selling proposition. Right? So what makes you different from this other competitor? Why should I buy from you? Why should I patronize you? as against patronizing your, your competitor. So that is what you need to find out. What stands you out and what makes you different from your competitor? That is key. Then the next one is segmentation, right? You, everybody cannot be your customers, right? Everybody cannot just be your customer. You need to have um, a particular set of people, set of customers that you actually produce for. Number one is where are they? What is their demographic? What is their age range? What is their income rate? What, um, what is their gender? What is their economical status? So you need to put all these things in consideration. Let me use for instance, uh, I have uh, this friend that produces tiger nuts, right? I've come across tiger nuts where they said tiger nuts for 150 or thereabouts, but her tiger nut is a thousand era. So she cannot say that everybody is a target market because number one, not everybody is willing to buy her tiger nut for 1,000 Naira. That is because the people that will not buy for 1,000 Naira definitely do not know the value of her product and they cannot value it because they don't know what it takes. So the market is not for them. So you can, they cannot not just be her customer. So if you look at it from this angle, you also see that Number one, she needs to be in a particular place, which in this case, she's actually on the island, right? She's in a particular place, and so she's gonna be selling this product to people that she knows are going to value it and are actually going to have need for it. If she take it to the mainland, some part of mainland, they cannot buy it for that amount. I've gone to, I've gone to a, a hotel where I literally went for an audition and I asked for their bottle water and they told me bottle water is 700. Like, <laughs> I literally had to come, I came out from the hotel, I crossed May Road to the other side of the road to actually um, get water. At the end of the day, I actually bought pure water, not even the bottle water they because I, I just, like, I can literally buy water for 100 naira, mass 150, and I should be buying it for 700. So if you look at it from that angle, I am not their target market. They literally have people that are their target market that is going to pay that of 700 naira just to buy the water, right? So have your market segment. Who are in your market segmentation? Everybody cannot be your market. Even if the whole of Lagos State it can, cannot buy from you. It's not even possible for them, to, for everybody to buy from you. So 
have specific people that you produce for and know that these people are going to patronize you, these people are going to value your product and they are all going to stick with you, right? So now the last one and this uh, phase is concentration. Now, so you find out what is your unique proposition, what differentiates you from the others of your competitors in the same marketplace that you are. So I now decide that, okay, I need to capitalize on this. So maybe is, um, is your customer base your relationship with your customer base or maybe is uh, a particular flavor uh, that you actually put in in your product that that makes you stand out just concentrate on that i also have um this very close friend of mine right so there's this particular person that produces cake she complains all the time that her cake is very expensive but Every time she wants to buy cake, she still goes back to this woman. Number one is because she believes that she has um, a different and a unique recipe. And according to the, uh, the cake designer, she said her recipe came from abroad. And secondly, is that she said that anytime she doesn't have money, she goes to this woman and the woman sells cake for her on credit. So every time, and she's literally a leader in my, in my fellowship. So she will have birthday celebrations and every time people celebrate their birthday she must buy cake so sometimes she has to buy cake like four times in a month five times and will she, she will still go back to the same woman to buy the cake right so she has her unique selling point what stands out at her, her um her ability to actually stay on credit i'm still coming to that in in the next phase of this video then she also have um the fact that she have a unique recipe that is only common with her Right? So these are the things you need to concentrate on. Concentrate on what makes you stand out and capitalize on it. And people will always come for you because of that. So let's talk about five ways to market your product if you don't have money. Now, number one is doing, vending your services for free. Now, when I say for free, as maybe for the first time, you, need, you literally have to render your service for free to people to use. In exchange for testimonials, you're, when you're giving them, you're like, okay, I'm giving you this product for you to actually testify about it, for you to test and give me a review on it. Right? Yeah, I, I've seen people do that. Maybe they do a product that are like, I'm sending you this so that you can test and tell me how it looks like. You've sent, I've seen people send clothes to, obviously, a lot of people send clothes to influencers. Why do they send the clothes to influencers? It's so that they can wear it and talk about it and people come to patronize these people so with that you're growing your database and you're having a track record so that when people now because a lot of people want to deal with trust can they trust your product if it's something they want to do what do you have to show that this is what you've done so far with this product right so have a track record and before you can do that you might want to offer your services for free you've also come across um Maybe some apps that will tell you that you should use for free trials for maybe for one month, for three days. After that, then you continue making purchase or start making payment because they want you to test run this and see how it works, right? And have, the, and have um, a feedback. So do that for testimonials. Do that for reviews. It's okay if you don't have money to, to just get influencers to talk about your business. Do free services and get feedback in return. Then the number two thing is do joint venture. Okay, so there are people that already have the market you're looking for and you're looking to penetrate this market. It's okay if you collaborate with them, like beg them, maybe tip them, or whatever thing you need to do to actually get them to agree to market you and your product to their customers since they already have the existing customers that you are trying to build. Right, so you can actually talk about people going for other people's podcasts. You go to, you visit their podcast, and when you are talking about um, them, when they are talking about other things, and people hear you at the same time, you're using the opportunity to sell yourself and sell your product. So think of joint venture. Think, um, look, think of people that already have the market you you need to sell your product, or who you need to actually join forces with to actually establish yourself. I remember. Um, some fast food sell food with drinks right so it could literally be a joint venture yeah people come to buy food on you know so 
when you're selling the food and you're giving them the drink, you're already, they came for the food and you know, they probably might not even want to buy the drink. They might, might not even have in mind buying drinks, but because food automatically comes with the drink, so they don't have any other option than to buy the drink. And if they like the drink, they might want to continue buying it. And you are every time in the presence of your customers, right? So the number three thing is um, doing a video content. Yes, you might not have money. I came across picture. If I can see that picture again, I might want to attach it to this video. But if if I did not attach it right now, if you're not seeing it, it's meaning that I did not come out, I didn't say it again. So this woman literally take pictures of her clothing. She is into um, chief wears. So she take pictures of it. And if you, they took a behind scene of her taking pictures of her clothes and you find that, that it might not be so perfect, but when she finished doing that and present the pictures, the pictures look um, very professional as if it was, it was taken from um, a professional photographer. So you can create content around what you do. And TikTok is a one of the good places. I'll talk about that in my next video when I'm talking about digital marketing. It's one of the places that you want to do so much, right? You can do a lot of things. You can talk about your, your business by yourself. And it's very common with people that actually do trivias. Like if you do, you're doing wears. I also have this um, lady on TikTok. She, she's literally into uh, content creation. Like she's a photographer. And you see her create content with her photography business, the, the before, the during, and the after, after of the production. And you see them, it's quite amazing. So you can do content, create content, around the business you do. You do it for free, nobody's doing it for you. Like, I am literally shooting these videos by myself until I have enough money and connection to actually get professional team to build my team. So I shoot my video, I edit it because I had to do it by myself. Send out your pitch video. So it's still okay for you to maybe use your phone and record yourself. Remember that pitch video is supposed not to be more than 30 seconds like in the first 30 seconds you should be able to tell what your business is all about to your customer right so you can do it two minutes and learn to send it out to people to watch you can put it on your social media handles if possible share it to people with every possible opportunity you have do this and you keep snoring high Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have picked out one or two things from this video. And I want to say that if you've not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, like, and share these videos because it might also be important to somebody, right? So in my next video, I'm going to be talking about digital marketing and I hope you're also going to be picking out one or two things from that video. So until I come your way next time, keep doing what you're doing and your breakthrough is quite near. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.